everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, we'll get right to it. Um, if we can start with one round of questions and then, uh, you know, I'll go around again if we have time. But um, Najir, we'll start with you. You have your hand raised. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, Najir Chambers of Big Go Belt Media. Uh, congratulations. And I, I would love to really start off with a soft question by asking just overall emotionally, how are you all feeling seeing the success of this show, seeing the show uh, grow uh, to this must-watch platform for for entertainment, but also for knowledge over the years. Uh, I mean, we're I think just excited that we still get to keep doing it. You know, we uh, yeah, it was a it was a great time getting to make a second season. That was not a, a given, so we got to and we got to live with these characters a little longer and and uh, stretch out a little bit more and use all the things we learned from making a first season so it was, it was you know it's great when you get to do that kind of don't take any any uh moment in this business for granted so yeah i agree with that. i think that's great <laughs> <laughs> thank you emerald love the background i'm gonna throw it to you next love it <laughs> Thank you so much. Love, love the series. Um, Emerald Marie from Your Web. I wanted to, you know, I seen in the in the uh, preview you had some hip hop icons that show face. You have Too Short and E Forty. Why was it important to add, um, you know, just hip hop components to this season? Uh, I don't know. We're just flexing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got we got uh, we got Bay Area legends in our show. I think that was super important to us. I mean, those are some of our our idols. You know, so. On the one hand, it's like, oh, we just want to now that now that they're also witnessing us as artists, wanted to see if we could all kind of be on the same page and get them in the show. And they're a part of Bay Area folklore. So I think introducing people to the Bay is kind of impossible to do without their music and subsequently them as a physical presence. And so getting 40 and short and, and Mark Curry and Dante Bosco and some of these other folks who are like, you know, who are big Bay Area icons in the show is was huge for us. And, um, and also, you know, selfishly, we wanted to hang out with them, you know? <laughs> right, right. And, you know, you guys have, have done a great job of maintaining authenticity and demonstrating the Bay Area. So I commend you. And I just, I love the series. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Throw it over to Matt next. All righty. So one of the coolest things about the show for me is seeing your incorporation of different art forms whether it's music and dance and these heightened monologues that seamlessly integrate into everything. I wanted just to uh, know a little bit more about some of your inspirations behind incorporating those different uh, artistic mediums. Uh, Diggs, you want to do it? Uh, I mean, they are... A long, long time ago when we were making this movie, when we made like the movie, right? We sort of used to say that the it's tough to understand what it feels like to be from the Bay if you do it straight, right? Uh, because it feels so much bigger than it probably looks from the outside. And so all of, when we st first started playing around with these conventions was really when we made the film together a bunch of years ago, it was, that was kind of the idea that like, if we heighten the language, it actually is going to feel more true. So that's kind of how it started. Um, but it turns out that, um, and we wanted to incorporate dance into the TV show because that's another sort of vocabulary that exists there that, that uh, we wanted to be able to show off and we had the, the people to do it, you know, but, I think it, it turns out that these being able to incorporate these other things are really useful storytelling tools. Um, they allow us different points of access into the thought processes of the characters and into the complexity of the situations that they're that they're in. Um, and so it's a it's actually a metaphor is really useful. It makes you feel something. It's a, like a much faster way to get to the feeling of a thing uh, than trying to talk about it all the time. And often as human beings, we don't talk very much, right? So uh, translating that to a screen, we can put something that feels right on there and it becomes pretty useful. Najir, back to you. Uh, thank you again, Najir, Big Obel Media. 
Um, the, the the other thing that I really commend you to, and 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 how masterful this the show is, is really the balance between the comedy and and these hard conversations. What type of discussions are you two having? Uh, considering this is your 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 golden child here, <laughs> you, you know this egg that glued to this 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 this, this goose at this point now. Uh, I would love to kind of know like what com- what type of conversations do you two have to really set that that medium or that that baseline to to make this show work first of all i'm gonna need more gold for this to be my goose <laughs> yeah <laughs> i wasn't gonna say uh, it. This is, <laughs> I don't need a lot more uh, uh, off top but um <laughs> but the goose that i'm trying to uh <laughs> yeah we're doing a whole bunch of other farming but yeah yeah yeah, yeah yeah uh but uh but in terms of our base level, I mean, look, Diggs and I joke a lot that like a lot of the jokes in the show are for 10 people because uh, our sense of humor is hyper specific. But, you know, if it makes us laugh and it makes the other writers laugh and it makes the actors laugh, that's generally a pretty good gut check on whether or not it's playing for the circumstance of the show. We've also got some very funny actors that contribute a lot of a lot of improv to the show and and and, uh, and, and keep that pulse going. But a lot of it is like, you know, season one. We're going to talk about something with a kid with a comedy frame that's very serious. You know, the prison co- the prison industrial complex is like you know, from for everybody affected by it is not a fucking joke. You know, and so when you're going to make a comedy about that, it's like, oh, we got to be careful that we don't play around with people's reality too. You know, and so I think we dialed the comedy to where we felt like it would sit nicely. And what we learned is that actually, because we were taking the serious moments so seriously, it actually allowed for a lot more comedy. And so season two, we got to come back and go, actually, we can we can double up the jokes if we want to, because we're not playing around with the seriousness of the circumstances. And so once you take that seriously, it's like when it's like when somebody passes away in your life, like the jokes hit harder because it's it's needed. That valve is needed. And so a lot of it is like joke, 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 gut punch, joke, 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 you know, and that that rhythm works really well for us. And so I think David and I will just laugh and laugh and laugh with the writers and the other producers, Jess and Keith Calder, and then. You know, and then we'll go, and, and it's funny because this, and those, you look at those last few moments of every episode, or sometimes the opening of the episode, it tells you what the base code is, and then we're gonna have fun with it. You know, um, you. I'm gonna throw it to our two newcomers first, and then I'll, I'll come back around to you, Emerald. Um, Ariana, hi, nice to see you again, Raphael. Hi, David. Hi. I had a question about the N-word episode for both of you guys. So Sean is mixed race, but that doesn't mean like the white parent can't be a part of these conversations, but they also can't be the leader. Like, what was it like to navigate this? And David, did you go through your own experience? How did you tackle this? But in a way that there's really not a right answer, but there's so many wrong answers. (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean i think that's that you just stated it right there right like it's uh this it's gonna come up if you're parenting a kid at least you know if you're parenting a mixed race kid my white mother was the one who had the n-word conversation with me so like you know in, in actuality that's how it happened i still remember i was four years old but uh yeah why did i say it at four years old i called my cat I had a black cat. <laughs> I called it a nigga. It was like, what? <laughs> My mom was like, that's not going to work. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, um, I think the point of that episode is really to watch how we've set up this circumstance where the Miles and Ashley have decided to persevere through this thing, right? The choice to remain a family has been made. Those stakes we handled in season one, right? So we were looking for opportunities to figure out, to show that. What does it look like when you make this decision? And here's the one weekend they're going to get to spend together. And the last thing on their mind is that they're going to have to deal with this. But life still happens. And Sean is still a growing boy. And these things are going to come up at inopportune moments. And so it does. And so the real, while the, while the, sort of discussion happening in that episode is around the usefulness of the M word or like how, who is allowed to use the M word. What I think, what I hope that we're watching is two parents trying to figure out how to still be two parents given extreme circumstances. It's a big thing, right? It's like, Miles also hasn't gotten to parent at all in the last nine months. And so he's jumping in being like, I, you know, I, I, I want to parent my son. And like, I, I didn't want to parent this conversation, but 
if this is what I'm, if this is what I get to engage with my son on in the next two days, then I guess that's what's going to happen. And the reality is like, look, there's a, there's the conversation about usage. And then there's a conversation about the education about the word. And the reality is like black or white, Asian, Mexican, whatever the fuck, you got to talk about it in your family. <laughs> point this word is coming up so white parents two white parents got to talk about that shit with their kids you know like miles miles and ashley have that great stupid moment that we put at the top of the episode where he goes <laughs> you, you lead this because you're black and she goes your people made it up and they go all right <laughs> <laughs> same time then you know but i think the reality is like that word is a part of american history i don't think there's anybody who can avoid that conversation at some point because it's 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 still prevalent in the fabric of our society and, and like kids have to contend with it and the question is coming and so the reality is like, we were talking about it with Atticus on set season one, because he was like, what does that mean? We were like, oh, <laughs> you know, uh, and that's, it's, it's always tricky, but like every, every parent has to negotiate their way around that conversation at some point. And so I think we were just like, well, let's, let's do it on the show, you know? And at the end, it ends up being a movement piece that is like how they actually do it. Because if we really had that conversation on screen, it'd be like a five day, um, you know, TED talk session with a bunch of different speakers trying to explain, it. <laughs> but, but we never hear their actual explanation. We just know that they make an earnest effort. And that's kind of all you can expect from a parent is like, try your best, see how it lands. And then we're going to have to keep clarifying and going back and talking about it. And you're probably as a parent going to learn a lot about yourself and how you feel about a word like that while you're trying to teach it to your, teach about it to your kid. For sure. Thank you so much. Aaron, did you want to ask a question? Yeah. Um, I've actually asked everybody this because I think the show is so important and it, I think that it is, it, it tackles real life issues. But my question is, is like, what's the biggest lesson you've learned about yourself from the show? And what is, do you hope the, the legacy the show leaves? <laughs> um, I, I'll say that I really have um, tried to un, uh, un, hitch my wagon to any notion of legacy that's like a big that's a big no-no for me I think especially male ego is particularly attached to the notion of legacy and so I'm really trying to not be thinking about how I'm going to be remembered or how the art's going to be remembered I think there's a self-indulgent self-importance that comes from that and so I really try to avoid that at all cost but I, I'll say for, for for learning about myself um I'm a control freak and <laughs> to learn some of do that already but yeah <laughs> on the show so it's, it's good. you know and it's still it's still a, it's a battle i lose constantly <laughs> as someone directing writing producing and starring in the show <laughs> but but i think you know the collaborative element of the show is high and the reality is we have 300 plus employees and we have departments that work incredibly well on their own and um and this this ship is the is this is much more than the sum of its parts, but it is certainly the sum of its parts. And so I think when I look at the show, it's not one of those things where you're like making a song or something and you're like, yeah, I made this, this came out of my head. I think when people say like, oh man, you and David made this show, I think we just get a little uncomfortable because the reality is like, that is, that is, um, that is the, the marketing of the show. That is the cliff notes of the show. And that is how we'll talk about it on IMDb maybe. But the reality is that we have a massive team of people that lead us to the moment where it's just the two of us with all of you. And if this was honest, if this was an honest process, there would be hundreds of people on this Zoom call and we would not be answering nearly as many of these questions. And so I think there is the myth of the industry when you're outside of it and the myth of creating things and then the reality of it. And my learning of through this show really has been about being mindful to acknowledge the reality of it and not buy into the myth of this like, oh, were these like smarty artists who made a show. And it's like, it took a lot of people um, to make this happen. And, and their work is all over the place. And when that super fast scroll happens at the end of the show, just know if we were allowed to slow it down for time, we would, but <laughs> 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 we can't. <laughs> we have time for one more question and I'm gonna throw that to Emerald. Thank you so much. You know, uh, Raphael spoke so much into my, my next question. After speaking to so much of the cast, the one thing that was a running theme today was how collaborative the effort is. And so, you know, it's funny to hear you say that you feel like you're a control freak because, you know, what, how, how has that balance been like when you have all of these cast members that each represent so many important societal issues and they represent different cultures? 
And today we hear diversity so much, but it can be performative. But it sounds like you guys have really been able to listen to your cast members, but, you know, still having your goal of a script and be collaborative. How is that balance or that process like for you? Uh, I think, you know, Rafa says this all the time, that like our real job is to hold the totality and the and the what's necessary about the show in our heads and then create. Mm -hmm. Um, an atmosphere where everybody else can actually do it, right? And can bring themselves into it. And as long as if somebody has an idea and we hear it and it fits on the spine, then that we can do that idea. But it's our job to just make sure that it fits on the spine. And so mm -hmm. using that as our metric, I think kind of allowed it to be a, a hopefully like a, a really free and collaborative space. And where, I mean, the reality of the situation is like you work on enough things and like it's so hard making tv is so hard it's like stupidly hard it shouldn't be as hard as it is the like reward is pretty small given the amount of work it is if i'm being perfectly honest like um it's so much work uh, and uh for everybody and you talk to people who have just been in it for a long time and they've been burned so many times they've felt unseen so many times and they're geniuses and they're working at the top of their capacity. And it's just like, we're gonna be here for however many months doing this. Can we create an environment where people get to flex and feel proud of the thing that they made? Because ultimately when we walk away from it, that's all we're gonna have. I just left like being an actor on a TV show that's not gonna air the last season of the show, right? So those folks don't even get to see all the work they did. Right, you know what I'm saying? Which, and that could happen to any show at this point. So like all you have- a couple days on this show. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. So like all you have is what is the work you're doing in the moment. And so can you be proud of it? Can you feel seen? Can we feel, can we have a good safe time doing it? And like, it turns out that that's just, that that for us is really important. And the rest of it hopefully lands for a <laughs> Come from the theater and so like collaboration is I think maybe a little bit more in our in our wheelhouse than people who come up traditionally through television and film and so I think For that sure. gives a little bit of a leg up in terms of like knowing the value and being really receptive to kind of good ideas from everywhere and look the reality yeah. is is like we can't do all the ideas and the show can't be everything to everybody involved it just can't it's got to stay a little specific show and some ideas are just not for this show they're great ideas but they're not for this show or they're not for this character or they're not for whatever. But what we try to do at every point in collaboration is like, who are the writers in the room and are they going to give us our best shot at coming up with those ideas early so they have the best chance of happening? Do we mm -hmm. have actors that, that know how to communicate well with us so that they feel comfortable to come with us with not only a good idea, but also to help us kill a bad idea? Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, that's not, <laughs> kind of, oh, <laughs> you know? That's important. That talk about yeah. it, you know? And so some of it is also just, I think for David and I, and I think we're approachable in very different ways on set. If they don't feel <laughs> comfortable bringing that shit to me because they know I'm like this and we got to keep it moving, they'll go to David. And if they're like, oh no, David's off worrying about this, I'm going to go to Rafa because he's going to he's gonna figure that out today or this second or you know whatever it is. And Jess and Keith called her other producers are like that as well. And, um, and also, you know, we got, a, we got a set that has a lot of people that are friends outside of the show. And I think mm -hmm. that helps us also get it's a show, so there's there's also like chatter, you know, where people are like, well, we can't officially take this to him, but I'm gonna go to this person who'll mention this to this person who'll mention <laughs> Rafa, you know, and then we can kind of, as long as it's inviting and it's not, you know, I've heard about other shows with the dictatorships that other shows do, and I think it would be like the most heartbreaking thing ever if we ever got described as being one of those shows, and if we were at any point, it'd be like, oh, we need to go shut that down, you know, and 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 so I, I think our goal is always to make sure that the creation of the show is why it ends up being a good show is that you can feel that people had a good time making it. And I think what we've learned at least in the last two seasons is at least in all that we're aware of on our, on our sets with the couple hundred people that work with us who came back for season two, a lot of people came to us and said, it's because we love working in this, in this way with this crew and these, this group of people. That's all the time we have. Thanks everyone.